Yeah, I'll cool. just uh, I'll play around and you can you can talk about uh, gardens. So, <clears throat> Gardenarium is a game that I made with my friend Kyler, um, Kyler Kelly from Montreal, and uh, my other friend Ylang Ylang, also referred to as Catherine DeBard. And uh, she made the music for this, and Kyler Kelly did the programming. And um, yeah, so pick a game. So as you pick hands, the world like kind of like starts to change colors, and like plants grow, and like just like yeah, general craziness happens. And like as you walk around, the realms change. And it was super fun, like figuring out the music for this, because I'd just be like, yeah, like it's gonna be beautiful garden, funny, cute. And then my friend's like, yeah, fun. And she just made like fun, like psychedelic music. I think that like actually like she made her best music like on this. Or maybe no, actually she's like really talented. She does all this crazy music. One of the things I really like about this game is uh, having seen some of the stuff that you've done comics-wise. Like one of the most important things about like a comics artist, a lot of times, is their lettering. Like you kind of think of that as their voice. Uh -huh. And I really like that there's hand lettering in this game. So. Oh yes, this was super annoying to do, but like, <laughs> you know, I was just like writing all these stories and I'm like I'm trying to like make them as short as possible so that I can like because I wanted to make the boil properly and like I, I can get kind of crazy about like the boil like like the, like you see how it's like wobbling like I wanted it to be the proper wobble <laughs> so I had to make everything like 12 frames so I had to like retrace every like story like 12 times but thank you <laughs> My friend Kyler did such an amazing job on like optimizing in this game. I just want to mention, <laughs> like, it's amazing that it doesn't slow down right now because, like, there's got to be at least, like, I don't even know, like, 2,000 an spray animations, like, just happening right now. Oh, can I, um, I want to say, turn around. <laughs> around, around, like, okay, walk forward. Forward more. Yeah, keep going. This cool. Okay, yeah, yeah turn this around. one was a good one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so pretty. Yeah. I love this, like, kind of, like, crazy, um, thing that happens. It's just, like, the wave. Okay, keep, keep going forward. Um, yeah. Keep going forward. Okay, wait, no, turn around. Look the other way. <laughs> okay, here. Wait. Where's the can? Okay, grab the can. Over here. That one. Yeah. Wait, oh yeah, that one. And then turn around quickly. Maybe I'll turn around first and then... <laughs> okay, now walk. Sorry. Damn. He also, like, found this really amazing tool. It's, um, it's called, like, it's like a prefab brush. So basically, like, you just place prefabs in like the scene like using a, a brush tool and it's like super useful okay yeah so I just wanted to show you a little bit about Gardenarium but um yeah I finished that one about a year ago I think I showed it for the first time here actually at Fantastic Fest last year and um since then, I made another game called Egg Boss. It was actually um, a game jam 
that I wanted to make like a full game for, like top to bottom finished. And um, it was a, a girl game jam in Montreal at the University of Concordia. And um, so me and Ylang Ylang, Ketchin Debard, the same girl that did the music, and uh, GP Lackey, we uh, formed a team. And we made this really, really cool, like, um, game. It was actually kind of an accident. Like, my friend misunderstood what I meant by sound in a memory game. So, like, basically the goal is to get two of the same, like, you have to listen to the sound and then, like, pick two of the same eggs with the same sound. And that wasn't like necessarily my first idea, but I like whenever my musician friends give me ideas. They're like always very, very amazing and different. This was like a lot of fun to do because we were just, you know, working really, really hard. And, like, it was game jam place was like on a rooftop and like the sun is super beautiful and all the clouds and yeah. Oh GP's here. <laughs> this is GP, he helped me make this game. GP <laughs> Yeah, it was fun to decide what goes in the eggs. It was like, what, what goes in eggs? There's um, <clears throat> there's an echidna, which is kind of like the craziest animal ever. So like an echidna has this insane ability of like being able to um, like detect life forms, like the very essence of life with its beak by like just like going around in the mud. It like detects like electromagnetism like, so that it can find its food. And um, kind of like a, a platypus looking creature. Kale did um, uh, programming for Ilya. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been making like freeware for like six years or so, but uh, I'm just gonna take some of the stuff from the last year that I like. Uh, yeah. This is solitaire.exe, which is the first game I made in Unity. Toss on art department. Uh, 
art department. Yeah, What's art, that? art department. So it's uh, it's an apartment. Art so, department. Art. Yeah, this is made for seven day FPS. some frog models oh was it mag oh crap hey, i'm so sorry Mason made the frog. they're both they're both super froggy so like mush and mags are uh, great though yeah now now indy warhol comes to kill you <laughs> uh, with his presence yeah that's it <laughs> nice uh anyways yeah let's uh move on to alia yeah, so we're going to move on to Oh, I was also just going to quickly. I also make like a crap ton of gifts because it's a lot more fun than making games because it takes way less time. Yeah, just uh, trippy geometric stuff. Yay. Uh, yeah, this one's cool. <laughs> I love that. The that Mori. That's uh, Palga. I make uh, I make little things for like, oh, friends on birthdays if I like actually notice it on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, Elia. So this is our fantastic arcade game. Um, our friend Kayla Thompson Hanat did the music. She's also known as uh, Mozart sister, and um, she's actually like super important in the process. We actually like went over all the levels together first. Like we, yeah. <clears throat> I really wanted to make a game about like the. Um, the like about hiking in um, the uh, Pacific Northwest, and um, she grew up there, so we kind of like just talked about um, like areas on uh, sort of like Vancouver Island and like all the way through like um, San Francisco, and actually I got the idea for this game from. Um, hiking in the Muir Woods uh, last year I went hiking with like the guys that did Push Me Pull You and with um, Marie of uh, uh, Wild Rumpus and um, <clears throat> they were all kind of like rushing through it and I was kind of like trying to like slow like trying to like not trip and die stop and uh, smell the moss a little bit yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to like be able to see things and like yeah not fall off the cliff so like I kind of had this like it was sort of like a game it was like try to see as much as possible and like keep up with your friends and so I thought it was kind of like a game and like yeah so that's what I based the game on. Yeah. This was like the first one that was built. Well, that you did the art for, but like the last level that we actually. Uh, yeah, we, this is the last level we got ready. Yeah, we like got ready. Yeah. Yeah. This was actually just like a test. Um, I really wanted to experiment with like turbulence. Um, and so I, I made these like animations that were like kind of like just exploring this like invisible space and then I decided to layer those animations in space and then progress through them in time and so that's kind of like the effect of exploring that
This game is actually quite addictive. When you play it, like... Hey! Yeah. yeah so the... I can't talk right now. <laughs> <laughs> Too into it. The, the controls are... Um, they're ASDF and JKL... Let me call them. Comma thing. And, um... <clears throat> so you're just trying to hit the, like, two moons at the same time. Like... Symmetrically. Yeah. Um, and, um, Symmetry is like Yeah. Um, oh man, like. The, oh, off by 1%. If you get above 90%, oh you get 95, dude. you get like a cool yeah, bonus I can't ending. It. <laughs> I'll get it for one of the other ones. I was distracted a Damn. little bit. I'll, like, I'll just not think about anything yeah. when I play uh, the next The one. end scene, because like we made these like scenes at the very end that you can only get if you get um, above 95. And the one for Clover is super fun. Yeah. I, like, constructed most of Redwood, and, like, yeah. that was the one that I, like, did most of the testing on, so hopefully I can uh, I can do well on this. Yeah. Yeah, it was really fun to make this game. Oh, what? How did, okay, so, like, we got word from Wiley about this a long time ago, and, like, I had this idea from, like, GDC last year, but, hiking in the mirror woods and like I wanted to make this game so bad and I was so stoked on it and so I started working right away but like it was going really slow because like I didn't really have a programmer and like <clears throat> I went to Toronto just for fun and I was hanging out with my friend at his coffee shop and I bumped into um, this guy named Fernando um, yeah. What's his last name? Fernando Restituto? Yeah, something Restituto. like that. I don't know. But he's super, super sweet. And we were just sort of like talking. And he was like, you really need to meet Kale. Uh -huh. And I was just like, cause, yeah, I guess we're both like kind of trippy people. And so like, um, I was just like, yeah, I really want to meet Kale. Like, you should just call him up. And then what? Like, he called you up and you were like right around the corner or something? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so we just like went and like hung out, and like I was just showing him like like my landscape drawings, and he was like showing me his shader art, and I was just like, "There's this game that I really want to do," like, and he was like, "Yeah, I want to do that." So then we just started working on it, and um, <clears throat> he came to Toronto, or no, he came to <clears throat> Montreal for a little while. I was house sitting some cats, so I had this like really tiny like um house all to myself and then me and kale just sort of like went on this like three-week bender <laughs> just like making this game and like <laughs> it was really awesome and we, we came up with the idea for the moons yeah because we were just like going on walks by the by the river every mm -hmm. day and like yeah the moon is just so beautiful and like it was re reflecting on the water and it was just, Oh, yeah. We went through a lot of... We had a lot of ideas yeah. about <laughs> during this time. Something is a little bit messed. I've been... Uh, it's been getting a little bit messy, jumping between the two builds for Arcade and uh, the regular one. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Can you there guys talk about some of the differences <laughs> between the, the regular build and the Arcade build? If any of you guys have seen the Arcade cabinet, it has a very unusual controller. Can you talk about how that happened? Um, yeah, well, okay, so... Uh, do you want to try playing this one, actually? Well, yeah, uh, chat. please. Okay, yeah. Oh. I'm kind of, like, addicted to, like, my own game. Uh, good luck. Try and get above 95. If not, we can do that. Do oh, I'm going to get 95. Right. Um, yeah, so the arcade cabinet is with moss uh, and, like, little bits of tree, um, which was just, like, completely came from um, the movie Naked Lunch, which uh, I really enjoy just because it's, like, super weird. It's by, like, Cronenberg. Um, but anyways, there's this, like, one scene, the guy's, like, a writer, and he uses a typewriter a lot, uh, and he just gets, like, you know, super into typewriting, uh, and this typewriter comes in, like, this, becomes this, like, strange, fleshy beetle thing, with, like, and just the way that he's, like, just feeling it, like, there's no keys on it anymore, and it's just becoming, like, it's becoming, like, a weird extension of, um, of him, so I thought doing something like that, but with moss would be really really cool plus like just i really love exploring like old growth forests 
and uh, just like feeling the moss. This is my favorite song for the, yeah. for the game. The song's really good. I'm really, really happy with the, uh, the like little loop effect that like the path does with one of the notes. Um, I feel like it was like a pretty smart way of implementing it because it's just all of the little panes are just like in a list and it's only really animating the one that's like at the very front of the list and then each next one just gets the information from like the previous one before the previous one gets like before the one at the very start gets updated again uh, so you just get this like thing that like just ripples through uh, through all the quads so everything in this game is actually two dimensional sprites and they're all just like layered on top of each other. Well, there's a bit of like 3D in the menu, but uh, in game it's all yeah, just 2D sprites. Yeah. With a uh, cool little, everything's like also using the same shader as well, uh, which is just like a custom thing with uh, like fog, just a base color, how much it's like wiggling. I think there's a little bit of a wiggle to it. I'm starting to get like the trippy colors, so. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, we want to make more levels for this. Yeah. <clears throat> so we already have the art all done for one, we just need to like document it. Yeah. I have all the, done, the art done for um, a beach level. Yeah, as soon as we are greenlit, we're just gonna like, make a new build with probably two new levels, maybe three. Yeah. So it we're depends on like how much fun. time. We should probably mention the Humble. So this game oh, and yeah, all Humble. of the games that are on the uh, arcade cabinets out in the hall, along with six uh, kind of classic games from previous Fantastic Arcades are all available uh, in a Humble bundle this week. If you go to humble.com slash weekly, uh, and is there also a link on there to uh, y'all's green light? Yeah, the green light's actually like in the game. There's yeah. a little lamp, and if you like select it, it just takes you to the page. Because uh, the menu uses like all the same controls as the game. You like should never have to take your hands off home row unless you're on like an operating system that can't handle eight inputs at once. Because that's how you start the game. There's a little fix in for that. Um, but yeah, so in the menu, it's just like a bunch of positions and like look at targets and it just uh, all the positions are like doubly linked to each other so it has the one to the left and the one to the right and I guess the one if you select it because sometimes it sort of like goes into uh, like another position um, oh shit oh did you get it? I must have yeah I think so it's not fading yay cool. <laughs> yeah oh, oh shit scene has been modified Oh, did it close? No. Cancel that Cancel, shit. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> There's a little problem with the floor, but it will fix that. I wasn't letting you put in the notes either. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, there yeah. You go, yeah. <laughs> oh, you hit all of them at once. <clears throat> Whoops. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, well. I really want to play um, the mushroom level. No, it's got to use camera. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mushroom level is pretty cool. Yeah, the menu is pretty simple. It's just like hit left to go to the uh, to the target on the left, hit right to go to the target on the right, uh, and then just the two uh, index fingers to sort of enter whatever it is that you're looking at. Everything has like some sort of state if you if you hit that, whether it's like opening up an external website or you know just giving you a better look at something, building up a level. Yeah, I really like the the fog in this because it uses just both like uh, like a horizontal fog and a vertical fog. Because mm -hmm. I really like just like you know a little a little bit of uh, mistiness at the feet, um, and then that just like samples off of like oh. a screen space gradient. So yeah, you, get, you like, know, I really like the mistiness um, up from the bottom though. I'm gonna change that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> And we put in this like funny function where like you can um, 
speed up the time. Oh wait, no, it's not in this. Oh, space wasn't doing anything? No. Oh yeah, this is. Yeah, this is like super handy for This is like in like all the public builds, so if you if you press space and you know, like the mouse X control is up to like zero global time to like eight global time. Uh, it's fun to play around with. Uh, there's one person on our green light page who complained about the game being like too easy and like kind of hipster, really? hipster, like game, just walking so game kind of thing. Uh, if you want more of a challenge, just hold down the space and move your mouse over to the side. <laughs> yeah. Get some of that like 300 BPM DDO shit. It's a really good song. Oh, it's over there. <laughs> You'll have to buy it. <laughs> You'll have to was... buy the the bundle. Like, can oh. you go back into uh, into one of the levels? Um, yeah. Just which which one? one? Uh, go into mush. That way they can see it. Hyper hyper tripping. I mean, uh, hyper tripping. Yeah. I'm actually just gonna show off some of the editor stuff because, like, if you're making stuff in Unity, like, write editor scripts. It uh, it helps so much. Especially when you're like working with artists, because then you don't have to worry about them like implementing things wrong. It's great. Uh, let's watch. Okay. So let's see how we're doing on time. Okay, we still got a little bit. Yeah. So one of the like the best things that I had is this like autoplay. So I can just put it on autoplay and it just like does everything, which is nice. And I can speed it up too. And it just, like, plays the level. Uh, which is really like handy for testing, especially when like I just want it to play through the song completely normal and make sure that like the end actually works. I can just like turn it on autoplay and go get a uh, go get a coffee or something. <laughs> These like little like weird fish things are yeah. super fun to play with. They're really cool. Yeah. You should uh, make some more of that and start making gifts. Yeah. Get into the Tumblr game. <laughs> oh, totally. Um, we ha we like made this tool in order to um, like for my animations to like be like laid out like in a line. Um, yeah. It's one of my favorite tools that the like I've ever go. used. I'm gonna go over the note controller, but I also can't touch anything here, otherwise it uh, like stop playing. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just want to get to the end of this level because it's pretty cool. Yeah, so you'll only actually see everything get like hyper rainbow. It's uh, just using an animation curve based on like your score, and then it reflects that onto whatever. So we just have like a crazy uh, RGB rotate function uh, that kicks in once you're. You don't start seeing it until you're about like 50% score, and uh, it maxes out when you're around like 80% score. Someone actually no pointed at this glitch, and I guess it I guess it is a real glitch that I that I should fix. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, the uh, oh, this is Redwoods. I can show it here too. So yeah, this is like the note controller autoplay BPM set like a threshold for air. This is what I'm really happy with. Oh well, audio clips, you know, just drag it in. But um, this it's like a Unity editor thing that they don't actually disclose. It's in like some weird like extended editors class that like isn't documented but it's a, like a reorderable list. 
So like you can click on things and like you can check which one's selected and when something's selected you can like I made it so you can lay out the uh, note patterns, which is like dead simple to get uh, fun little fun little patterns into the game. You can like switch them and like change their order and stuff. Uh, this seems really useful, but I guess like there's a chance it might get changed a little bit in the future, so they don't want it to be super public. Really? But, uh, yeah, something like that. Wow. Um, Oh yeah, and the arcade version, it's using processing, so I just have like some OSC stuff because uh, that's like a, it's dead simple to port stuff from processing to Unity as long as you know you disable your firewall for processing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, where is the? Yeah, just one of the tree lines. Yeah, so this is this is really cool. I'm like so happy with this. I'll switch into like scene view. Uh, <coughs> Oh, I'm also going to actually just crank the uh, the fog way up. Yeah. So this is. Let me see. I'll pick the ground because it's like super visible. It's really nice. It just uh, takes in like a number of textures. You tell it like how many times to repeat the like loop of textures and the total length in like scene units you want it to go on for, and then you can like set cool curves like. And then you just hit create line, and it uh, takes a few seconds. But it lays them all out for you, which is uh, really nice. Yeah, that's really handy. Oh, I didn't set it to loop. Uh -huh. Loop. I think I can actually just hit reposition. Yeah, that's faster. Cool. Uh, yeah, you can set like the frequency that like the color goes at. I'll have to create line again, though. Oh, that's just going to be like a weird mishmash of colors. But yeah, that was like super easy for Paloma to do uh, her stuff because she just makes like a giant folder of images, drags it all into the texture thing, set a set a cool curve, and uh, it's good to go. Yeah, it was yeah. Really good. For the way that I animate, <coughs> can we show a GIF of um I have a, in the folder? Yeah, yeah. Um, I made a GIF of like sort of the way that I'm I've been animating this. This. Let's just take a look at all the game. images in here. That's cool. Oh yeah, these are just like some early like tests. Yeah. So like the floor <coughs> is actually like a bunch of two-dimensional sprites. Mm -hmm. And I've been like experimenting with sort of like the way that you can make 3D shapes just by slicing two-dimensional objects and like layering them. And so I the way that I did it, I just sort of like um like drew the floor the way that I wanted it. And then I just sort of like traced each frame evenly. Mm. And um, this is open the GIF. It's like yeah. <coughs> this this GIF. Oh, not this one. Yeah. But this is for for the beach. Yeah. Test. Oh, it's an AVI. It's cool. Oh, though. this is um. This is actually another project that I did. This is completely different. Um, it's called Fast Machine. <coughs> it's just like a bunch of visuals that I like. Um, put together in like an experimental game situation where like your only control is like the keyboard and you just like pick these like scenes and you just watch them unfold. Oh yeah, I like this sound. <laughs> this is the same thing. I've just been like experimenting with like three-dimensional shapes using two-dimensional like slices. Yeah, far out. Let's see if I can find that GIF, though. Ground of mushrooms. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah so this yeah. is the GIF. It kind of looks tribal. It looks like a tribal GIF. Yeah. Get it, get it inked, bro. Yeah, so I just kind of, cool. like, traced, like, how the it was happening, like, at that moment. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. Yeah. Palm trees. Yeah. Oh, and this is, um. whoa, it's upside down. Weird. That's super weird. Huh. It's never happened uh, to me before. Well, tried to just load up a GIF. This is oh, um yeah. for the beach. A little more, I think. Yeah, some more. Uh, more uh, I think there's there. one more image in here. Maybe this is the GIF that you wanted. <laughs> <coughs> no, no we already saw the GIF I wanted. Cool. Oh yeah, yeah, this is a super like one of the oldest GIFs that we have from the development. Uh, yeah. Mirror. Yep. Mirrors. Mirrors the moon. Yeah, I think that uh, that's. That's it. The beetle. Any of you guys have any questions for yeah, Keller Paloma while we got him up here?
All right, please uh, give them a round of applause.